Greetings, the name of the Most High, Jesus Christ, and the blood of Jesus that sets us free, our Savior and Messiah, the way to I am within and without, or Zion, or the New Jerusalem, or simply, I make all things new, Jesus. Yeshua, Yahushua, Yahshua, Yeshua, Isa. I, I don't know what else he would say. I guess none of these work because in Revelation 19, it says that he has a name that nobody could utter. The name of God is ineffable, unutterable. So we uh, have these various metaphorical, allegorical names to sort of approximate something that we can't approximate it because it's too big, it's too complex. God is not a respecter of persons. He's too big. If you stand and look up in the firmament, you'll realize, and if you look at a Hubble telescope or if you look at any of the the pictures on YouTube of space, especially the Nat Geo ones, you know, really good ones, or any kind of uh, Nat, you know, documentary films or whatever, you realize that, gosh, we're really just a speck of dust, teeming with life, teeming with drama, this sort of endless struggle of good versus evil, yet at the end, I am, there is no struggle of good versus evil, there is no good and evil at that point. And we strive to unify at that point. So I guess this whole journey is a matter of returning to Zion, which is I am, which is um, the conclusion, which is also the beginning, which also is infinite. And, you know, so that's my understanding of God. I, there are so many people that have like an anthropocentric future, and they probably do. I feel like I'm more of an older soul, meaning I've, gone through all these things and I'm now I'm kind of at the end and you know there should be being one with God God with me as one you know with no division is uh you know that's the last step right and that's then you you give up your separate selfhood or whatever through your free will and many of us kind of have tried to do that although I know I got irritated the other day when I had this track and I realized and, and I thought, wow, this sounds so good. I was listening to it on my my system in my studio of somewhere over the edge with, you know, it's like a dubstep with, you know, and, and, a, and a filmic kind of composition and um, some very complex chords that I played and dubbing Judy Garland's voice in and having it all sound really nice, you know, really top notch. And just blowing me away. And, uh, you know, nobody cares. And I'm kind of like, so I said, F it. I'm, you know, it's just, this is just amazing. And then the Lord spoke to me about it and said, you know, the thing is, you've done two things with that track, which he loves. Number one, you've mocked the entire culture of of uh, death, the entire Satanic culture, you mocked it and laughed at it by the actual musical composition. Two, you mocked Babylon Hollywood with the Judy Garland insertion. If it came from anyone else, it wouldn't have accomplished that. But because it came from me, it mocked both things. It mocked the devil. And so I would imagine it's got a vibe on it that people, you know, and people do favor it. And, they, you know, there's here, people here and there. And there's been plenty of plays and some thousands of plays, I guess, if you add it up on... Uh, Podbean and, and SoundCloud, there's, you know, almost a couple thousand plays. But it's been there a while, you know, and lots of downloads. And we give it away free. But, you know, it's never going to be, it's always going to be a weapon of war. Therefore, there can be no expectation of the world left in me. And even if I get irritated, it just shows me that, well, God's got to do more work to beat that out of me because that's not real. That's not my mission. I just something I wanted to share with you because it uh, 
it, you know, I wondered, well, Lord, does this mean that I'm still got some of the world that needs to be beaten out of me more? I mean, I've, I, I, and it's like, no, it means you like the track. I wanted to share it, but your tracks will always be misunderstood because they're not what they are. You know, they're just like a lot of things in the spiritual battle. If you do something that is rock and roll, you're mocking rock and roll. No matter how serious you try to be, it's like the sarcastic kid in the room. You know, in the classroom, when you're, when you're kids. And he may have a moment where he tries to be serious and read a paper in front of the class, and the kids just start cracking up, and then he goes back into character. There's just no way that they will take him seriously. You know what I mean? So that's kind of, in a, in a maybe that's not a very good comparison, but it, it, it's how I feel, I guess. And, um, you know, I, I know I fulfill a function. There was a time where DJs, and, and I guess they still do, you know, they don't need to tell me. I, I give all DJs permission to play my stuff wherever they want. But when, when we had this pod safe music thing where DJs all over the world were, downloading from there and then remixing us and playing us all over the world, New Zealand, Australia, England, Israel, uh, you know, Russia, uh, Europe, whatever. And, um, you know, those were the days in the early, in the early, you know, the early music days. And they were, they were playing a lot of our stuff. And then, and then what happened is it looked like that kind of went away and then tracks were there. Then everybody was a DJ and all the DJs were making their own beats and, you know, the samples were everywhere and, and anyone could, you know, get a hold of any kind of great sample. And it just all became this kind of like whatever your taste. I don't even know what happened to it. It's just, it became, I, mean, I forged my own path, which is kind of a, what I call a hybrid. So I'm composing, I'm playing, I'm manipulating samples and, and beats and different things to fit this collage work that I do. So music for me is like a collage work or like a composer would do where you have all these different elements. And it's like a war, I guess. And sometimes I forget my role in it, you know. And then when I remember, I'm all joyous and I can't wait to do another, you know, five or ten tracks. You know, an album every other month. And uh, basically, an album every month or every other month. And I put a lot of work into it. And, but, you know, there's a reason because it goes out and does something. It doesn't return void. It 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 It, it creates a... And then over and then over the months, you know, you notice that it gets played a lot and a lot. And then a couple of years later, someone brings it up, or you, 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 you. Sometimes I've I've heard a piece of mine on, uh, you know, on like an intro of a of a video here and there, you know, an amateur video. Yeah, you know, it, it keeps reverberating around the web. But make no mistake about it, the the, the sonic output is creating a dissonance in the atmosphere that's creating the fall of Satan and, and or his minions or whatever, you know, creating this warfare. Not, you know, it's, it's, it's fighting against the hypnotic atmosphere that sucks people in and makes them complacent and go on to the, as lambs to the slaughter. It completely upends that. And then people get pissed, you know, they really do. <clears throat> and, um, and I'm very proud to be, uh, I'd love to say I'm filled with pride, but I don't, I, you know, half the time I, I, I'm down on my, you know, I, I'm not able to keep that edge too well. But I'm proud to be on that side of the battle. And uh, as far as pride's concerned, you know, I just, I don't know that I take that much pride in it. In, in the, you know, when people slam the tracks or whatever, I just start laughing. Because they don't understand them. I mean, I know what they are, and I know what I'm releasing. It's not like I don't know what I'm releasing. I know what level it is, what, why I did a certain thing, why it sounds a certain way. It's not like, you know. So people can say, and they can have their say, and they can have their criticism, and if they're inaccurate, I will, I, I will point it out to them. But, you know, if you have to explain why the joke is funny, you've lost it already, so there's no point. The point of the music and of the sound and of the word and of these words and of the tone of my voice and of the whole thing, the whole thing, there's a f switch flip by Yahweh or whatever, 
and it's 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 not even about sound it's not about words it's not about the bible it's not about anything that but it it, it it's representative of something or it's doing something that we don't see so that makes me very happy you know it's like i i know and i see the result of it and i and i realize what it is and that's why i would encourage you to do the same thing, no matter, you know, and to not look at it from Satan's point of view, because we're here to evict Satan. We're here in, in, in World War X. I'm here to, to appropriate the blood of Jesus Christ, fashioning it into a sword called sound, and stick it through his heart. That is the devil, realizing that he has his time, you know, and when I say that, I mean to be constantly to be constantly in his face and constantly mocking and defiant uh, to, you know, to play on the freeway without a uh, scratch. You know, to, it's counterintuitive. Most people won't do that. But, I mean, I don't know. You know, he is real. He is a person. And, and his minions are real. And they really believe in him until they come across somebody that is not on in their little family, and then they go, how can you be so mentally ill as to say there's a thing called Satan? That's ridiculous, you know, while they're on their way to their ritual. While they're on their way to their bloodletting and drinking ritual, they're, 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 they're yeah, yeah it's, it's just all double standard, it's all double speak. It's all totally unfair, and it's all, um, you know, and if you play ball with him, uh, you're twice dead, you know, you're done, you lose. You lose the race. It's like you run into the infield and they're waiting for you as Billy Graham to say, it's okay, you can still be a Christian with us. Or whatever. How dare you judge? I'm not, you know, I'm, uh, I'm sick of playing this game. That's why I don't talk to Christians because I, I'm sick of playing their game. You know, I'm sick of their game. Uh, like it's the only game in town. I mean, I've, I have lots of ideas that just don't fit in the Christian religion and they kind of... You know, and and uh, yeah, and the one main idea right now, the one main inspiration I have is outer space. They're not interested in outer space. They're you know, um, the religion keeps you away from outer space. <clears throat> the stars, the portals, the dimensions, the beauty of it all, and and, and to, to put ourselves in place by looking at the expanse of it. And awing the Lord, he, all the more the creator of all these things. It's just the, the the design and symmetry is wonderful, and it's dazzling, and it's amazing, and it's it's just you know it it, it it pulls us there. But if you escape to Zion and you're just I am, and you don't have a body, then what about space? Well, while it's there, I'm going to want to dazzle around in space while it's dazzling around me. You know, and I'm I'm just I don't know how I'm gonna get it out there, but I am. And uh, you know, however it goes, whether it's it's this infinitude of space or a single point, no bigger than the, the than the uh tip of your finger that contains God and everything, or expansed out to infinity. It's to me they're both one and the same, and if it's all the same, I soon play on the stars you know I do feel I'd like to go on that adventure it's not enough for me to have a kind of a faint memory of having been around before having a glimpse of something out there having a, a premonition about something having a more through a glass darkly experiences seeing the flickering light in the cave and seeing shadows moving around and never quite seeing very clearly what it is. I'm sick of that. <clears throat> and so the other part of the sonic output is to be dealing with that, is to be able to create images of that. And that's why I really like uh, uh, the, the, uh, the director who did our video of Untethered in Space. If you haven't seen it, you should see it. It's a great video. And, uh, you know, it, it just really gave that whole feeling of awe of and wonder in space. I said, we have to do more space music. We have to get, at least that will take our consciousness. And as we're composing, you know, the Lord can take it and make it and bring space to us and open the portals to us and do things, you know, in accordance with him that, that, 
that he would allow because he doesn't want us to be tethered here and then have no awe and no wonder and no, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have a little you know, frog in my throat because I turned the recorder on. That's the only time it comes when I turn the recorder on and when I turn it off, there is no frog. Completely psychosomatic, manipulated by the devil, I guess. I don't know. But it's, you know, so that's why I like living in New Mexico because we are so conscious of the sky. You know, the sky is, is pretty much everything here. And I almost wish I lived further from Albuquerque and Santa Fe so I, you know, would have even darker skies because I really like, you know, looking at the skies. And you see stuff moving around up there. It's, it, it's not concerned with me. It's, it's doing its own thing. I have had those ships that were concerned with me. And we were in battle, doing an epic battle. Even bef you know, before I had the, the weaponry to be able to do it, I just knew how to do it. I just know how to do stuff. Like I've been around a long, 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 long time. And I've been a warrior a long time. And, I, and, 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 I'm, and yes, I was battling the demonic ships in 1998 in just off Laurel Canyon in Los Angeles. And they were hovering over the house, and they were um, getting into the house, and they were, you know, and, and they were hooked into satanic ritual abuse memories that were triggered and, and scary, scary stuff beyond horror movie, you know, beyond par the paranormal series. And, um, you know, eventually it brought me front and center with, you know, the whole thing again, and that eventually led over time, like over, you know, in, in 19, 1998, I'm sorry, 1992, 1993. And eventually all that led, <clears throat> by about 1998, 1999, realizing I cannot do it without, I just co completely collapsed in my own way to before the Lord. And I said, Lord, you just have to make this thing work out because I can't do it. I'm all out of moves and, you know, I can't fight this on my own. I, I, I you know, foolishly was doing it for all those years. And going to these MUFON meetings and looking here, and then we, we saw satanic, you know, program people that were being abducted by the ships, and then in every case they were being abducted, and then and then abducting children and taking them to some place in outer space, and molesting them. And it's like the same pattern, the same pattern, the same pattern, the same pattern. Congress, the same pattern. The Franklin cover up, all this stuff. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I better turn it <clears throat> off because I can't get clear. I have been interrupted. I cannot get clear. Yes, I will. I have some. I have water. Uh, I have a, um, I don't know why I didn't just drink the water before starting. <laughs> but anyway... It's all the, the, you know, what you call the Illuminati, what you call the, uh, you know, whatever, this, this satanic grid, if you will, you know, that's not human, basically. It all comes from, you know, it, it all is intergalactic as well, you know. And I remember when they were scalping souls, when we were like 18, and we were kind of, you know, put in this center, for, you know, to for whatever, for rehab, for shaping our behavior, whatever. And I know that there was this nurse there named, her name was Eunice. And I knew she was from outer space. You know, she was from out there somewhere, or she was a hybrid, or she was something un, not human. And they were literally pulling souls out of these kids and sticking in some oversoul and then sending them home with their parents. One after the other, so they'd all be zombies together. Invasion of the body snatches in your face, it snatches in your face on purpose. And this is what, you know, the, the intel agency, this is what they all, you know, guard against, is the truth about the universality of this ever getting out. So you have people fighting, and, and I, you know, I, I understand it's, uh, there's a lot of people that don't really, no, you know, that don't really know about all that. And then, and I say, well, hallelujah, that means the Lord left you intact. But I saw this whole thing going on, and it was tied in with underground and of Los Angeles. And then, the, you know, but it all began with these, and then there was these ships that were different, you know, there were saucers, there were underwater ships, 
There were triangle craft that would just hover over you, making no noise, and follow you down the street. And wherever you go, wherever you would try to drive to, one of these ships would be over you, over me anyway. And it was all tied in with the ritual abuse of children. The most bizarre thing. You would think aliens from outer space, that would be the last thing they'd be interested in. I mean, it, it wasn't logical to me. Right? And uh, this was well before, you know, we're, we're going way back to 1970, 1969. You know, we're going back to that far back. And, uh, you know, there were, that also is commensurate with waves of UFO sightings in Los Angeles at the same time. And then, and then I remember my mother sort of mocking me and saying something like, well, they're all in cahoots with them because when you go to that side of things, you're all in cahoots with them and the portals and the ships and the, the whole bit. So, so there's this big secret that everybody knows but me. And, of course, that's all been covered up and explained. And I can't explain it in a way. There's, there's, you know, for me, it's just, can, at this point, it's just reminiscence. It's a memoir. It's, it's, uh, it didn't, the knowledge, and here's the frustrating thing. Knowing all this stuff, and there were some pretty famous people involved as well, you know, and the whole hierarchy of high society and how it's tied in with the UFO reality, and then they cover it up and say it doesn't exist. To, un to believe in Satan is to be in cahoots with these beings. The best way I can put it. And it, it, to be in cahoots with this whole intergalactic pedophile ring. I mean, it's, I, if, if I could put it in those terms. And um, it's terrible. And so all the ships, you know, and, I, and, and they were tied also to the legend of Atlantis, the pyramids, the obelisk, the this, that, the other thing. It all kind of tied, which Atlantis was like a place also with all that kind of pyramid technology. and, and um, But it was all tied together. And what they were all, I guess, trying to do is bring back that Atlantis again. The children, it was, they were being indoctrinated and they were being, they, the, it's the aliens, if, but they're not aliens, they're lizards, whatever. But they want the kids, they take the kids. And then they, then you get some kind of a, a Manchurian candidate, uh, you know, right after they do their deal with them. And then people that are targeted individuals sometimes have ties into this and don't even know it. They're being tracked and monitored by something from outer space. And, and so it's, it's just, it gets to be really frustrating because though I've seen their world, I've seen other dimensions, you know, right next to this one that, that people go to and fro in freely when they're members in good standing, if you will. And so they laugh and mock the rest of the humans on the earth because they don't know anything, you know, about what's really going on. And um, these must be the same people that uh, that they're talking about transhumanism and the idea of, uh, you know, uh, genetic manipulation to, to, to for, for Elysium, for uh, endless life extension while the masses just die. Don't worry about just die. Just dying is a good thing because you go to other levels and other aspects. There is no death. But death being in one of those machines that would be some nanobot, okay, that, that where you have this quasi-idea of life extension, where you may or may not be the person you were before you left your body and went into, you know, or merged with the machine. The real freedom of life is in that death. Because then you do go to the stars, you know. I mean, if you do, if, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, he saves you, and he's in the stars. <laughs> so, and they're trying to keep us here so we don't go anywhere. And, you know, as a recycling job for fueling their, whatever, their, their, their programs, which are a lot, but I mean, some of the key points were Atlantis, pyramids, you know, occult stuff, you, you know, Intergalactic <clears throat> Federation, I would say that would be all be pretty bad, you know. If they're all in, you you can't have nothing to do with these guys. If if right, if there's some federation with people like this, or these kind of beings and these and military industrial complexes involved, and in a sense we're just you know being monitored. They also have had capability. They have been monitoring each and every one of us. 
upon the earth, just like monitoring the earth, all this time, and now you see the technology coming to overtly monitor us in a kind of a slow, stupid, physical way. It's just basically a reflection of what's already been there all these years and all these generations. So I keep having to have this water. The frustrating thing, again, is tethered here, no movement, stuck here, shackled here, getting a glimpse, can't see clearly. It's And then it's been a few years since I've had, I haven't been, you know, being with the Lord, they tend to understand the power that you have. I mean, you can wipe them out. You, know, you, you understand any one of you. I know you feel powerless because of the mind control of Satan who's been working on you to say you're powerless. All your life you've been told you're powerless, you're a loser, you're nobody, and they're scared to death of you that if you ever wake up and realize that you're not, holy crap, they're in trouble. That's another frustrating thing, to be around so many people that consider themselves victims. You know, they pray not even expecting for a result. You know, hoping that maybe it'll help a little bit. Not really believing the prayers they're praying. And I, I'm one that falls in that category too because of this collective amnesia we have about what happened five minutes ago. So to me, it's not acceptable. I cannot, I, you know, even if, say, church was not corrupt and it wasn't a battlefield area where if you go in with the spirit that you've got, I'm assuming that you have the same spirit. If you go in with that spirit, they, uh, you know, it's just all hell breaks loose. There's just no other way to describe it. If you have their spirit, no, it's all calm and, you know, let sleeping dogs lie. It's fine. They'll welcome you and you can just sit there and meld with everybody and become one with the conscious energy and do the Jesus Christ thing and the rapture thing and have a fun time playing footsie and, and everybody and everybody else's business and uh, and just just like one big amalgam of writhing, you know, uh, corruption and pain and no one can get away from anyone and it's just sick. If you want to do that, go ahead. Um, but let's say for a second church was normal where you could just go in and you could actually, you know, it was an inspiring thing and, and all that. And it was just, it just was on the surface what it really is, rather than being kind of a metaphor of something on the surface. And then, uh, but the real reality is, you know, we want your soul underneath. Let's say it was normal, like a timeout place, a place where you could go and you could really have Jesus and fellowship and you know what I mean, and, and hold hands and sing kumbaya for real. Um, well, even one place like that could turn a whole nation around. I mean, it, it could threaten the, the status quo of the entire universe. And so that we've been playing this game for all these thousands of years that the people that have are of the Lord are powerless, kicked around, hated. Of course, anything of God is hated on a, on a Satan planet. Um... And they are to have no yearning for outer space. Tell them it's all demonic. They're to have no yearning to get off the planet. Tell them that's not Christ-like. You need to stay here and take care of the sick and the poor. And um, I just told you, taking care of the sick and the poor. Well, let's just talk about the poor for a minute. Let's say there's, um, you know... Uh, we're leaving the planet, going out to the great beyond, and there's a need for uh, people to to go, you know? Well, that takes care of a certain portion of poverty, doesn't it? Because they're employed. Same thing with, uh, as far as the sick are concerned, uh, the best way to take care of the sick is to have a burgeoning economy. Period. Uh, the regime in place hates the sick. That's why they have health care. They hate the poor. They've destroyed the poor, destroyed the black community, destroyed the middle class, but they're, they're supposedly for the black community, being that they feel they're black or whatever color. And there's a few other terrestrial things, you know, like um, Oprah Win Winfrey's out there, you know, and basically she's a racist who hates white people. Okay, how long does it take 
a culture to figure that out. She's a racist who hates white people. Very similar to Michelle Obama. A racist who hates whitey. And so she goes around calling white people racist because even if they're not. And if, you know, she's also like an abusive mother. If her guy screws up Obama, she blames white people as racists. So when he screws up, you get punished. Just like an abusive mother. So this is not someone that I would want to go see her show. This is not someone that I would listen to. I would not pick up O Magazine. It's just so blatant, the spiritual, but it's so blatant, the over, the over the top supernatural crap going on at the supermarket and in the street and all around us. Over the top. How you could have, you know, um, anyway, it's, gonna, it's going to, to the mat. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm extremely happy about developments right now. Because it looks to me like, you know, we are going into a time of great chaos and uh, that's where I thrive, boys and girls. That's where I'm, that's, that's my cue to take center stage right there. That's where I feel like, wow, we can finally get somewhere. That's why I, I feel there's not a malaise like there was. People are becoming actively awake because it's their, 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 life, their lives are on the line. It's all very dangerous now and exciting. You have to stay vigilant every day. You can't just, you know, nod off somewhere, right? And then I thank God for Twitter and Facebook and, and uh, the rest of the social networks out there and this, this facility of SoundCloud so I can get quickly strike with these podcasts, strike with the music, um, the, the YouTube capability of actually, because I've been trying it lately. I'm, I don't know how you get to my YouTube channel. It's Zeph Daniel on YouTube, but I, I can't even get there. If I, you go there and if you can get to my channel and subscribe, you'll see my beginning. I'm trying to kind of stick my toe in the water using the Google app, which is a completely amateur application. There's no editing of the picture. There's no, the, all the things we used to have in filmmaking. Was, you can't do any of those. But you can take clips, and you can, you can't really, you, I think maybe you can arrange them, but you can definitely um, lengthen and shorten them. You have to edit in the camera what you want. You can delete them. I'm not sure you can skip them over something, but... I've been able to edit and uh, arrange clips and, you know, show different angles because I think just having a, and I will try another one today um, to try to condense the meaning of this. And I, I, I'm just, the only reason to listen to me at all, at all, is to get the overall, is if you get a vision of what's going on from my my take on what's going on, then you riff in, in, in then you see something. You know, there's it's no good if... Um, I'm controlling your mind, you know. If you're seeing what I am, am what I'm, what I'm talking about, and then you're seeing certain things based on what I'm talking about. Now, the whole idea is to spark, is to be a catalyst for you, you know. Which is why I, in the end of the day, the power you have is this: Jesus won. You in Christ. Over, have overcome and are consummated. You have the power of all creation behind you, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ through your belief in Jesus. Where we differ from lots of Christians is the 3D kind of interpretation of and the gross physical interpretation and the anthropocentric interpretation of God and Christ in this return and this sort of narrative when to me it speaks of you know, if we're not including the firmament, if we're not including all the, you know, if we're not talking about Paul being translated to the, uh, to the second heaven, was it, to the third heaven, uh, and also physically in, in time and space, if we're not talking about Enoch and Elijah, if we're not talking about, you know, the, the reincarnation of Elijah's John the Baptist, if we're not talking about all kinds of things, you know, the, 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 then we're just sapping the life out of it and we're just waiting here to die. It's interesting. Now, the Scientology Center in Clearwater, Florida just opened up. Uh, they have a, a 350,000 square foot building and it's for people to get superpowers, to go there to get superpowers. They're trying to get them by jimmying the Satan thing. What you already have, but you've lost because you don't believe you have it, 
they're trying to get, but they don't have it in the first place, which you do. Isn't that the silliest th irony of, of all? And how many of you have just given up, you know, and, and me too, you know, times, and, and certainly last night, my frustration over a great song, and it's like, that should be in every... But see, I, I forgot myself for a second. I forgot what the whole purpose was, because maybe I had too much to drink. I don't know. I don't, I don't really remember. Well, maybe that was it. <laughs> Gee, I don't remember writing that. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the, the people have different purposes. You know, mine is not to, um, it, everything. If I go on a vacation, it's warfare. If I go to the, uh, to, seriously, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, um, a spiritual war, you know, but it's dealing with, and, and, it, it, you know, the greatest part of the warfare is where you're praying for the healing of people. Like when I have to pray for Barack Obama, I pray for our president. Just what the church kind of demands people do, but they don't really do it, right? They pretend they're praying, but they really can't bring them because they can't say. No, I, I think I see. I had a dream last night about Obama, and uh, it was just really weird because, you know, it, just, it was kind of gross. But it was sort of like I, 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 I sided up with him. And then the minute I sided up with him, I was left on the side of the road bleeding. <laughs> because where'd that blood come from? And my house was ruined. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, I don't read anything into it. I don't want to side up with him. I just in the dream, I I was a character who sided up with him, and it was all lovey dovey. It was hey, you know Barry, hey whatever, hey Barack, hey Zeph, you know right, we're friends. And then and then I'm left on the side of the road with wounded. I think it's just what we've been seeing on the television with the people who have aligned with him are politically damaged right now. It's the same thing, you know. And he's like off. You know, it's like, oh, you know, he's already written them off and moved on to somebody else. And that's just a perfect picture of, of the devil. And I'm like, you know, I'm praying for this guy and, and uh, it's good. You know, I'm, 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 I'm not praying for success or failure. I'm just praying for, you know, the Lord's will be done and that, um, you know, and that somehow he would not be a detriment or a harm. Like caught, and I'll tell you how he could be a harm. Um, stumbling us into World War Three, okay? That goes nuclear with China and, and Russia. That's the kind of thing we want to avoid. So I feel because of the dangers out there that, you know, and it doesn't matter what my temporary opinion is of Oprah. I don't hate Oprah, seriously. I, but I see what she's doing. The same thing with, you know, as I'm uh, traveling, when I say that's, you know, war, it's like, well, I'm kind of empathic, and I, I can feel all the vibe of what's going on. A lot of times I just have to start praying um, to turn that vibe around, to make it a more loving vibe rather than a hateful vibe. So I'm, I'm fighting for love in a sense, because ultimately God is love, and yet it gets to be bloody warfare, because you know what these people want, who are with the devil, is they want death everywhere and pain and suffering, which I don't want. And I don't want nuclear bombs, and I don't want people to suffer, and I don't want Barack to, to be a bad president. I don't want any of that. And I know there's a lot of you that say, nah, we have, you know, and I know what your hearts are. You're mad as hell, and you, you just want to stick it to everybody that you feel has, has done damage to you, but you're not seeing the big picture. The big picture is this. If we could put our minds on space, collectively even, if there is such a thing, I'm, I'm not sure there is, but... Let's just say as a nation or as a whatever. Um, with private investment, working with, um, say, NASA and whatever, I mean, without all the regulations and interfering, and Obama just canceled it because he wants everyone's consciousness down here in the mud and being harmed and afraid. Uh, but if we could get our minds on space, it would heal a lot of things. I just don't, I can't understand not being interested in space if you're here on the earth. And you can see, and I can't imagine not being interested in going to the stars. And I, there's been years where I just muted that, that desire I have because how's that ever going to happen? I'm so frustrated. I can barely see. I see the images of the cave thing and images moving around and I'm not getting a clear picture of reality and then you know, when we do deal with UFOs, they it's true, most of the, all that has been demonic. 
it hasn't been, or it's been impersonal. Which those are the ones that fascinate me, the Mexico City sightings. Now we're finally talking about something I want to talk about. I don't like talking about satanic abuse, the satanic realm, the, but you can't talk about the UFO reality without talking about this giant thing that's going on on many levels that, that affects our society. Because it, the UFO, the aliens, are all involved. They run everything. They run the show. So we are, in a sense, caught in the grip of something you would call demonic. And, and that's the result we see upon the earth. Wars, pain, suffering, abortion, poverty, that, you know, just all this. And the lack of being able to go to the stars, the lack of being able to expand, the lack of, of any kind of freedom, you know. And then being trapped in these bodies too quickly, we, we fade out, and we're not able to get it figured out. We're not able to, we're so taxed upon and put upon with having to work every other minute, you know. Of those of you that work, I know you're working two jobs, three jobs, you know, all the time. Never any time for any any kind of thought about anything, and just keep you down, 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 down. It's all the aliens who are not really aliens, but I'm just saying that UFO reality that we 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 see it's very negative, and that the involved in 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 shaping and behavioral shape. All the stuff you see comes from them. All the programs you see comes from them. All the all the the pain and suffering that we see comes from them. And the te- re-terraforming and geoengineering and genetic manipulation, it's all coming from them into the human realm and the humans are acting it out. And it's just, it's terrible. It, you know, the frustrating thing is this could be a beautiful planet with people... It's, it's beyond comprehension what, I, what is going on here on a daily basis. It's the mind... It, it, it's, all, it's far more you know, bizarre than, say, the mystery of God. It's truly baffling that people can think they're being normal by implementing these programs, whatever they are. By causing human suffering, you're being good and righteous and upright. So, by putting our attention on the stars, and it doesn't, you know, it's like you put your attention on it today, tomorrow stuff starts happening that moves it into place, you know? And and um, I don't know what, you know, I've talked about Richard Branson and his spaceport in uh, New Mexico here, and that's kind of there, and there's plans. And uh, I know people have said they want to go to the stars and leave us behind or exterminate us and replace us with machines. Yes, all the, of course, all those plans are there. Well, what do you think? But God has something to say about it because he's a person. He's no respecter of persons. And it's all about him and his plan, and he's going to work his plan, and they're not going to have anything to say about it. So if you're going to worry about stuff, no need, because he's already got this. His being separate from us is just a faith test because he's not separate from us, and you have to fight through the mind control to see that the inner is the outer, the outer is the inner. You know, it's this, this El Reverso thing that's happened that uh, sort of, you know, got us looking the wrong way or the opposite way of the place we want to go. I mean, it's like when I take a step forward, I'm really taking two steps back. When I go backwards, no, well, that was really a step forward. And, you know, up is down and down is up and everything's backwards. Like, you know, and, and, and painful, and very painful that, that you know, if you, you may be having a good time one day, then you see somebody else in pain, and then kind of like, ah, then you're bummed out. You, you know, then you feel you've got to do something. You can't just have an, a good time, you know, despite everyone else having it, and everyone's having a bad time, and you're having a great time, and you just tune it out. It's like, no, if the planet's not harmonious, if it's stressed and under stress because there's an alien force or some kind of, ungodlike or cancerous force that's putting a pressure on it, it's not easy to just have a good time. I don't care who you are. I don't care what level of money you are or, or aren't. It doesn't matter. I don't see anybody that can just... I mean, yes, there's a lot of zombies that I guess they could turn on The Simpsons and have a few beers and just tune it out, but why are they drinking the few beers then? Well, there's something in there that needs to be settled. I'm going to... They need to have an escape because things are just kind of anxious. 
people are manifesting. They're not acting like actual normal human beings. They're functioning in a different way. Nothing is really stable. Things keep flipping in and out of, you know, once you think you got it going on, it flips into some other kind of reality, and then you'd have to adapt again to that. And that wasn't what the logical outcome would have been. <clears throat> so you can't rely on any outcome because the outcome keeps changing. The goalposts keep moving further, and we never get an answer, like the Moody Blue song, why do we never get an answer when we're knocking at the door? Um, that's a darn good question. I would say the more you knock, the further the answer goes. Well, my answer is Jesus Christ, and there's nothing else to think about. Okay, zombie, just turn your mind off and uh, state you're with Jesus, and uh, we'll just have Jesus uh, have a... Why, why don't we let him have a word about that with you? Oh, no, I already know. Okay, well, then you know everything. You see, I can't go there with the religion thing. I just, it's, it's not going to work. Jesus, yes, religion, no. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. But still, the world keeps us from expanding, even in consciousness. You know, like religion. Oh, don't go out there in consciousness. That's new agey. That's demonic. Don't consider the other interpretation. We have interpretations here that have been tried and true by great theologians. Don't go beyond that or you might get into demonville. So it's been like 90% one way on the earth, you know, demonic. It's like, well, then I better not go outside because it's, it's actually more demonic out there, you know, in my yard than it is, uh, you know, um, how about church? We've seen them when they were all demon possessed by the same demon and they all became, they're all zombies and they would turn, they would actually, by their body movements would turn the same way at the same time, syncopated, like, like the army. It left. Hut! Right face, hut! Left face, hut! You know, over and over again. Over and you know, amazing. And one would talk, the other would talk. Uh, a room full of sock puppets. We've seen it. Up close and personal and, and, and compared notes to make sure that it wasn't just, you know, being off that day, or being having a, a weird take on something, or being in a weird mood, that it was objectively real. And that points to, and who's running that church? They're up there. They're in space. Why aren't we going to space? Because we don't want you to find out what's going on because you might realize that you've got some power, you've got a say in all this, you've got some free will, you've got uh, some sort of destiny. So... Um, It's really, uh, I suppose we'll work this thing out. I don't think that I could be completely happy with a, in a world that's unhappy. But I don't have to be bummed out every day either. You know, which, which I know a lot of you are very disappointed. And, you know, I, my word about Washington, D.C. is, if that's what's causing your pain, you'll, by, by Christmas... You'll know them by their fall. You know, the ones who are with the devil and the ones who aren't. That that will be, will that make you feel better? I doubt it, but you'll see that. And the continuing, you know, evaporation of the, uh, of the whole, whatever you've seen for the last five years is, you know, there's been a reverse. And, um, but you see, that doesn't make us happy either, does it? even though we were right in predicting it, and they were wrong to say, you know, a lot of the religion people, they, they were just pounding the table of the Antichrist. It's, that, you know, it's like, yeah, we reap what we sow, and even even they, and the corrupt people, they they look like they get away with it for a long time, but they, you know, they're going to pay. We're all going to pay. People in Washington raping the people, the, you know, over taxation and, and, you know, stifling entrepreneurship and, you know, stifling freedom, you know, that's that's because they don't like freedom, the people there now. But all these people will be exposed and all these people are going to fall. And things are going to change. The change is not going their way, it's going to go the other way, but that change is, is in place. 
Is that going to make you happy? I don't think so. Okay. Well, what's going to do it for us? And my feeling is, again, I know this sounds silly, and I hate to be a broken record, but I think outer space is the answer. Whether we go in arcs like Noah's Ark, or whether we go in uh, you know, a NASA cruiser, or, or one of Richard Branson's thing, or maybe that'll never happen, or maybe we just go with our minds, and, and, and we just go with the Lord, and, and somehow we don't need vehicles, we have the technology. But to put our minds on it, at least, is the, um, I think, one of the, one of, you know, at least it's going somewhere. Because uh, I feel that here, we, we're just kind of regurgitating our crap over and over again. We're chewing our cud, going in circles, lambs to the slaughter, just the same old thing every day. It's like being in that movie Groundhog Day. And I see more and more unhappy people and, and more and more people, they're just, just, basically, they look at each other the wrong way, they're in a fist fight. And, you know, it's, it's I, I don't want to live in that kind of environment. I must somehow move somewhere else. Well, if you change your consciousness, you could expand to another level of reality. And then the result that you get, all these hostile people, they won't be so hostile, you know. It will all be... De- yes, I know, I, I taught about that a long time ago, Mr. Guru. Here, you want, you want 50 bucks for your consultation? Here you go, have 100 uh, next, please. Take him back to central casting. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, or being cynical like that, right? I don't want to be that, you know, I don't want to be um, Pollyannish like I had been in the past and fall into the uh, the fake gurus and pastors and teachers and cult leaders and the whole litany of these people that are just there to uh, to burn you in some way. But somehow I've got to turn my attention to what's going on in space in some way. And then I love it when I'm traveling in an airplane and I'm, you know, in a jet and I'm looking down at the land. I love looking at how the land is formed. You know, surveying all the different ridges and how the, you know, the water goes a certain way and how, and the twisting, you know, the rivers, sometimes they really bend a lot and I'm I'm like, wow, that's fascinating. And and I just can't get enough of that. I love the the flight from, say, uh, Albuquerque to Salt Lake City because the terrain changes like three or four different times. It's just it's amazing. It all all the land of of you know that we go over always reminds me of the ocean that was like ocean floor at one time. And um, so I realize there's been so many cataclysmic events on upon the Earth, and I'm feeling like there's we're in this kind of state of flux. Um, well, we have the meteors coming in, and we have the you know the the meteor showers, and we have the you know the ice and uh, harbinger. We have other comets. We have a bunch of things going on in space that, and and then of course we have the. Um, I felt today it was like an El Nino pattern of uh, warm water and the Pacific water warming up, and that's how it feels today. I don't know if I'm going to be. I haven't looked it up on the weather. I just, it's, I have a feeling, you know, a lot of times they, they'll say it's El Nino when it isn't, or they'll say it's La Nina, where you have the colder water, and you have the warmer water of the Atlantic, and it isn't. But yeah, weather patterns, lakes, streams, mesas, seeing fish fossils, you know, ocean fish fossils while walking on the land embedded in rock, um, and just wondering about the planet you know, here's another way of looking at it. You can wonder about the Earth as a planet amongst the other planets, and then you're kind of in space again. And then suddenly you're you're out of this this sort of diseased, cancerous kind of parasite thing gnawing on you, and gnawing on you, and and it just your mind is in the affairs of men back and forth, and they do this, they do that, they say this, they say that. And and it's and it's endless. And you you look at a newspaper from 1925, and they were doing the same thing then as they are now. There's just got to be some other thing to think about. And you know, the Lord's the Lord. He's going to do it the way He's going to do it. And you know, probably nobody's going to have the prediction on on how it's going to go. Nobody. You know. Um, 
you know, the evangelicals are all crying for the end times, and they're they're saying, "Let all the evil come, and let World War Three come, and let it, let's let's pray for war, because the sooner we get Gog Magog and the rest of it out, and you got these globalists, they're trying to bring it about and fulfill Bible scripture because they're Masons or whatever the 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 human comedy is doing, whatever the absurd, idiotic human comedy is doing." God is God and he laughs at all these people, trying to, trying to force his hand, trying to force his will into this fo false Armageddon, uh, to this false Jesus thing. You know, I, I'm, and there's double, triple, quadruple levels of deception going on, moves 5, 10, 15 steps ahead. I'm sick of it. I want people to do better. And I, I don't care where you come from or what your background is or what your proclivities are. And, and or, you know, whether you're, you, you know, we're all sinners. So, I, you know, that's out of the way. I just want you to do better. I want me to do better. I want us to do better, to feel better. Does that make sense? I want us to feel, I don't want us to hate the president and hate this and hate that and hate the Illuminati and hate uh, Harry Potter and hate this, hate that, hate, 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 hate all over the place. And then, you know, you do earn the reputation. They go, oh, you're just those extremist haters. And you do earn that reputation. You know, I don't want to hate um, the, uh, you know, the culture. I like going to movies on occasion. I, I don't want to be propagandized. I don't want to be, uh, you know, I don't want a mind control kind of hidden trick in music to trick me. I don't appreciate that that happened before. That really was destructive for me. Because the programming goes something like this. To the person that's susceptible, who's just going to go on the Magical Mystery Tour, it's basically okay. See? It'll all go in their favor. The wind will be at their back. But if you belong to the Lord, and, and you're not supposed to go on that, and you're not one that would fit in on that bus, okay? You're not into that. That's not you. Then when that music hits you, it, it, it hits a self-destruct mechanism within yourself. It's like reverse destructive programming. And I'm then that was a sneaky trick. I'm I don't like that. You know, I don't like things that make people feel alienated. I, I you know, unlike that, they all talk about inclusion, but you know, basically they mean exclusion. They mean, you know, anybody but God, anybody but God's people. Um, you know, the the the, the more um perverse and antichrist the better. That's what inclusion means. So, so no, I don't like all those tricks, all those nasty tricks they pull. But I don't want to be bummed out about it either. I want to just laugh about it, you know. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. I mean, he has me being sarcastic. Every song, every, every talk. I heard a guy today talking. He's, he's trying to struggle with this idea of what it means, what it means to be alive. And I'm like, you know, I wrote on his YouTube thing. I said, you know what? First of all, it's not about you. You know, just to, to jar them loose a little bit from this, this, you know, and no, I, I'm not going to stop anyone from there on. Look, it's good. He's on a spiritual journey. I, I'm not going to say what it is. He's, he's, you know, exploring awe and, you know, his own following his bliss, following the path that's laid out for him. And he's trying to, trying to talk about the spiritual things and, you know, and Yeah, you wish he wouldn't say a certain thing, but you know he's he's uh, on the path, and um, there's a lot of traps, you know, like falling into personality cults and falling into cults of people who've written books and things like that. And um, when all all everything you need is within you, you know, the entire thing is within us, not in a book. It's not out there. It's not in a ritual. It's not in going to a class somewhere. You could do all those things, but it doesn't matter. The real truth is, you know, unlocked. The real truth of the Bible, for example, you know, is is within. The Bible simply is just like a triggering mechanism for truth that's already in us. Anyway, I can't go into that today. I, I you know, it's too frustrating. For so many years, I realized it's been in one ear and out the other of most people. And then I realized when I've gotten you know, kind of close to people we've talked and, and stuff, I realize they haven't heard a damn thing I've said for I don't know how many years. They have, they're, they're on their own path, and I respect that. I want the best for them. But they really didn't get it, you know. I mean, and, and obviously I haven't gotten it either because I'm not unhappy and I'm not happy. I'm kind of in this middle ground. 
I'm not thinking in terms of happiness or unhappiness. I'm kind of going through a change. It here's the frustration. It's like I can I told you the other day. It's all there right in front of me. And I can't see it. I know, there'll be people like Job's friends writing me saying, oh, see, you just have to look at it this way. I'm not asking for feedback. You can't see it either, and neither can anyone else. That's the point I'm making. But are we ever going to stop this, this crap we do with each other and this stuff we do? Are we ever, ever going to stop trying to control other people and stop trying to get people to see it your way. You know, maybe that's what I'm doing too. I'm trying to control you and get you to see it my way. Uh, I, I don't really care if you see it my way or not. I'm so far off the reservation now in terms of, of uh, where I started and, and I'm almost kind of back to where I was when I was a teenager, you know. And I'm, and I'm just feeling like I just don't want this circular thing either of going all the way back to when I was a teenager and, uh, you know, then we're lighting incense and talking to the Maharishi and doing the transcendental meditation and all that. I don't want to go back to that because that's just another, you know, like the Siddha meditation. It was just all, like all the gurus and everything. It's just, it's just one, you know, it's, it's a CF. <laughs> it goes in a circle. It's, it's just, it, you, you wind up where you departed from, you wind up right back there where you started uh, as a know-nothing in the first place. My cup runneth over from the Holy Spirit, who gives me words to say, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful for, for that I can feel gratitude toward the Lord, you know, for everything. I'm grateful for the beautiful view outside and the wonderful weather and the rain that came last night. I'm grateful for uh, so many things and grateful for lots of good interactions with people and, you know, and then the beauty of the land everywhere I look and then the outer space and everything's just amazing. So I... I but I am just going to pound on this a little bit. I think the outer space thing, I don't know what it, form it takes. Maybe we're in another dimensional body when we go to outer space. Maybe it's after death. But I know that space has a place. That rhymes, space has a place. Space is the place. And the earth is also space. And under the earth is space. I'm saying that we need to, you know, we need to be getting on with it. I can't tell you it's UFOs because I see the people trapped in the UFO cults and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Everything you keep looking for, it's, you want it physical, physical, physical. You don't understand. This whole thing that's coming at us from outer space or from other dimensions or the, the stuff that's negative, it's psycho-spiritual, physical kind of, you know, it's multidimensional. And it, and it, it ties in with, with, you know, your history and... And, and and memories and, and and the tunnel of light and I, you know it's just really wars of rumors of wars and 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 then you know um, hieroglyphs that have airplanes and helicopters on them from a long time ago and and earlier civilizations that had nukes and spaceships and and it's all this stuff roiling around and the mystery of the Maya and the Egyptians and the and the Indians and the and the Chinese and all the various different groups on the earth that they've all had their pyramids and their and their 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 cult of the serpent and Orion and Sirius and they're in space and it all just seems a little tainted so no wonder people want to just pull in, keep their eyes on their pastor, keep their eyes on their religious leader, keep their eyes on their book they're reading, you know, get into a comfort zone and sort of as a way of kind of ducking. And not having to deal with all this. But I still... You know, for a long time I gave up on it because I just thought, well, space is never going to call me. You know, whatever brethren I had before, if they were, say, beings that were flying around or whatever and we were friends, you know, that's just a premonition memory that could be of something in the future. I don't know, but it's gone. It's not like I can summon, you know, the, the, anything. I don't have any powers. The only powers that work through me are his, his, the Lord's powers, Jesus' powers, that work through me uh, because I, I'm a vessel for it. And I became that because he made me that. And so, but it's not like I can wield them because in my hands, I'd, 
probably become a despot. You know, I, I, that wouldn't be a good idea, <laughs> probably. Uh, but then again, he does the same thing with you, and then he tells you, you better not focus on those powers either, because once it becomes ego-centered, then boy, you're off to the races. So we have to be vigilant in not in and and egoless in this thing, or dying to self, so that Christ lives, so that the light shines, and that should be enough for us, actually. That should be enough, but I guess I guess what I'm sensing is that this space is coming to us, whether we like it or not, and we ought to we ought to have more awe and wonder about God. And whenever I look in space. Just like when I look at beauty around me, I guess that too. I just get so into God. I'm just so, I just want to be with him every second when I see how the, the amazing things that are right in front of me and proving his creation. And then I see what they do and then I start crying. You know, I see how they, in the war against God, they're trying to manipulate the genome to not to make things better, but to actually make things worse. And and that just breaks my heart, doesn't it? You? I see the EPA are out there. They're not trying to save the environment and all the beautiful things. They're trying to just wreck um, capitalism so that they can have communism and they don't care how many people they hurt and how much damage they do to the environment. So you have the EPA damaging the environment along with Obama and the rest of the... Uh, Green Nazis, the true believers, believe they're actually doing good, but hell, heck, it's getting worse, isn't it? Fukushima was really fun. They could have buried that already, but they didn't, right? So they want that somehow as a way to threaten people. I, I tell you, I, I, I just, it's really difficult, and I'm sorry, I've, I've spoken for 66 minutes. Maybe you should make it 66 minutes and 60 seconds, so it reads 666. Wouldn't they have a gas out of that? Gosh, let's see, 44, 45, 46, 47. I bid you shalom ahead of time. I'm going to try to do this at, at, at 666. 3, 2, 1, 5, 6. And then I'm going to hang up.